beat you just heard was done by Kill A A Nine. Follow him on Twitter and Instagram. Now, what prompted me to do this new episode is the main talk of the town in hip hop right now is Mace and Cameron. The Mace and Cameron beef. Um, Cameron released, in my opinion, a fucking high quality banging ass mixtape by the name of the program earlier last month. I want to say either October or November. Today is December first, two thousand and seventeen. Um, so I'm trying to think when that was. I can't remember. Maybe late October, early November. The probably November has to be November. Yes, the program release. It seems like so long ago for some reason. But that is a very good mixtape, you know. And just let y'all, we'll get into it, this later, but I'm a diehard Cameron fan. I'm a diehard Diplomats fan. So, you know, he released that and took a shot at Mace on the intro. Cameron claims in his Breakfast Club interview, not really a shot, just telling a story. And I definitely can see where he's coming from with that. And then Mace released this shit, like, what was it, fucking, a couple of days after, th- a day after Thanksgiving, I want to say, yeah, um, a track called The Oracle, he rhymed over the blueprint to a beat from Jay-Z, and, you know, this is the main influence for this episode, and this episode is all about the diplomats, yes, the mighty dips, you know, mainly from Harlem. You got a member from the Bronx. You know what I mean? But other than that, mostly Harlem cats. Um, diehard fan of these dudes. I mean, like, diehard is an understatement. I'm I'm telling you right now. You know what I mean? Um, and I'll be getting into the Mason Cameron beef. First, I will get into the whole diplomat's history. Now, I became a fan, because Dipset wasn't always a thing. I became a fan of Cameron in 1998, although my first time hearing Cameron was on the track Eight Is Enough off the 1995 classic LP from Big L, Lifestyles of the Poor and Dangerous. Now, I heard that first because I got that cassette in 1995. But, you know, when you heard somebody, kind of like what Big Pun, when I heard Big Pun on Fat Joe's Jealous One's Envy, I was like, that nigga has a nice verse. But I was never, like, I never remembered it or thought about it. You know what I mean? Like, just saying, I wonder if this nigga's going to come back or whatever. It wasn't like that. Same thing with Cameron. He, He just came and went on that shit. You know what I mean? But the first time I got aware of Cameron was on, besides that, you know, but when I heard him, I just like, this sounds familiar. I never thought of that until a year later after his first album came out. You know, I thought, oh, that's that nigga from uh, Lifestyles of the Poor and Dangerous, Big L's joint. But um, the first time I ever was privy to Cameron was the Horse and Carriage video. Now, there was this video channel. I don't fucking know for the life of me what it was called, it was on channel 8, that's all I remember, this is some East Coast shit, my uncle doesn't even know the name of this damn show, but it was amazing, and it, like, it was around 98, so the videos they showed mostly was like, Gangstar the Militia, Gangstar, um, you know my steez, Exhibit What You See Is What You Get Now, um, Nori, Nori, like the title track, you know, N-O-R-E, N-O-R-E, Nori, stand for niggas on the run, and that shit, Played that a lot. They played Jay Z and Jermaine Dupri. I hate Jermaine Dupri, but Money in the Thing, um, Big Pun and featuring Fat Joe, Twins '98, Deep Cover. Played that. All banging videos. Jail Felony. What you're gonna do? You know. So you get the gist. Like '98 shit. You know, basically. And I seen Horse and Carriage featuring Mace on that channel, and I was like, this shit is dope, I had something about that song, I just absolutely loved that track, and the video was fly, you know, so I hit a bit of little Puerto Rican judo, oh, 
you don't know what that what that is, you know, you don't know. That I don't know, just I just that shit was fly to me. The whole video was fly, the camera on killing shit, you know what I mean? I just loved it. And they would talk about, you know, albums coming out. It was this light skinned shorty that fucking posted it, this light skinned chick. And she said, that's off Cameron's album, Confessions of Fire. You can get it today. And it showed the cover. And the cover is, is straight garbage. I will admit that. That cover is just fucking ridiculous. Cameron on the fucking, I don't know, the big ass hammer. And gloves. It's real cheesy. But I love Confessions of Fire. I think that album is fucking amazing, in my personal opinion. And I got that album in 1998 on CD. Um, very dope album, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Fussing Carriage, of course, is on that motherfucker. Um, 357, that's, that's a dope-ass track, and a video. Glory with Noriega. Glory, that's, that's a fucking dope song. I love that song. Um, fuck you. A lot of good fucking tracks on there. It came out in 1998, one of my favorites in 98, to be honest, you know, as I said, the cover's kind of fucking weird, but, you know, it's very dope. What's disappointing about that album is, though, there was a big song that was on the mixtape circulating at that time. It was called, I think, Pull Up with DMX, that shit was fucking frack. But yeah, and it, like, it never got any... It never was released on any album, but it was on mixtapes. It should have been on Confessions of Fire. Cause that shit is fucking dope. And he got signed to Undias, um, Lance Undias, uh, Entertainment. That's what Cameron was signed to at the time. And yeah, like Confessions of Fire is just dope, man. It really is. D Rugs, D Rugs, a dope ass track. Um, the whole album is dope. And, uh, Dipset wasn't even really a thing. Like, he, I think he had, uh, Jim Jones on this album. I wanna fucking say. I don't think so. Maybe he did. I can't remember. <laughs> but I don't think Jimmy's on that. I don't think Jimmy is on, I think he's on the next album. I wanna say. But, uh, yeah, Confession of Fire was pretty fucking ill. 1998, Glory with Nori, I love that fucking song. 357 is so dope, the nigga Cam said, Beat a nigga black and blue like a pair of pennies. Penny Hardaway sneakers he's referring to. But that was ill. Then, 2000 comes, and his album, his second album comes out. SDE, Sex, Drugs, and Entertainment. Now that shit was dope as hell. Um, Losing Weight featuring Prodigy is my favorite track on the whole album just so dope love that What Means the World to You What Means the World to You is so dope Um, just a standout album Old Dirty Bastard was on that record this is a really good album that came out in 2000 Um, has some niggas by the name of Dutch and Spade I think they're from the major figures I want to say, um, very, very dope album, I, I love that album, such a good album, my personal opinion, I love, um, Sex, Drugs, and Entertainment, SDE, so that comes out, 2000, then, 2002 is when Cameron came back to prominence, um, and he started, well, the Diplomats, I think Jim Jones, Ricky Ziki, maybe even a young Joel Santana was featured on SDE. I haven't heard SDE in a while, so I can't really tell you. And I don't have the album physically, which is one of the few albums I don't have, because my hip-hop collection is fucking insane. Of course, I don't have everything, but I have a lot of shit. And I, need, I had that album, but I fucking sold it. Not because it was whack. Because I was on a, like, my teens, for some reason, I was on a selling spree. And I was like, I'll just get it again. You know what I mean? Some fucking reason. And I just had it ripped to a, I mean, like, burned to a disc. You know what I mean? I, I, was, I was crazy back then, but, you know, I gotta get that back in my collection. I got it downloaded, got it on the iPod. 
I need to listen to that shit again. But, uh, yeah, SDE is fucking nuts. But 2002 is when, you know, Cam came back on the scene. And how I found this out is there was this, um, hip hop shop in my area. It came, it opened like in 2001. I seen it. I would walk by it and stuff. I didn't go in that motherfucker until 2002, maybe late 01, 02. But when I went, this wasn't the first time I've been in this. I had to be late 01, 02, early 02. But I went in there like spring, fall of 02, I want to say. Maybe spring of 02. And I seen this mixtape there. And the mixtape, it was Cameron. I noticed it was Cameron. It said the diplomats. And all these niggas are rocking like fly ass mint coats. And I'm like, oh shit. Let me get this shit. <laughs> I bought it. Five bucks. Bought that tape. That shit was dope as hell. I remember Cameron was dissing Stan Spit on that mixtape. Stan Spit. Was a nigga that was um you know affiliated with Big L. He got he's on Big L's um second album, The Big Picture, which is Big L's posthumous album. Still a dope ass album. Um, which L was alive to see that shit. You know, um, he was dissing him. I don't know what that beef happened for. I don't I don't I have no idea why that beef happened. But yeah, man, it it was dope, dope diss. Um, I think Old Boy might have been on there. I might have. I can't remember Dipset Volume One that much, um, it's 2002, dope freestyles from Cam, I believe Jimmy's on there, Joel Santana's definitely on there, and, uh, I I just fell in love with that, I was like, this shit is dope as hell, you know what I mean, K-Slay hosted it, then, I listened to the radio one day, Hot 97, and Cameron was on there talking about how he signed the Rockefeller in his new album, Come Home Me, will be coming out. And they play the single, Oh Boy. Oh Boy was huge. I mean, Oh Boy was motherfucking massive. Oh Boy was a huge hit featuring Joel Santana. Um, Oh Boy is a banger. It's a fucking amazing track. Dope ass fucking... Um, video to it. Who did that beat? Just Blaze? I want to say it's Just Blaze, man. I, I can't remember. I think it was Just Blaze. Um, fire. Fire song. Um, they really shine on that shit. And then Come Home Me comes out. I'm, I'm, I know I'm still in high school, so it's not the summertime. Is it the summer? Oh, fuck, man. When was it? Maybe May of 02? I can't, I can't remember, but I remember I copped that shit. And I let me tell you, that got so much play from me. Cameron's third record, which is just amazing. Oh, you know, old boys on that motherfucker. Live my life featuring Daz, which is basically Cameron rapping on the ambitions of a rider beat. Um, Welcome to New York City featuring Jay Z. A lot of controversy behind that. You know, Jay Z and Cameron always had tension because Lance on Rivera, you know, signed him to uh, Entertainment, you know, on Dias. Um, so they always had some kind of tension, and Cam didn't like the fact that Jay Z had stabbed, um, Lance, you know. In 2000, not 2000, 1999, you know, because he claimed that Lance was leaking his album, Volume 3, Life and Times of S. Doc Carter. And it was always been tension since then. So, you know, Jay-Z was on, I think, a business trip or somewhere with Beyonce when they just started dating. I'm pretty sure I remember. It's all over the news. And um, Dame Dash signed Cam unbeknownst to Jay. He didn't like that shit, you know, because they never really got along. A lot of fucked up shit happened, like, um, PD, the PD Crack track, I forgot the name of that song, is it called PD PD? I don't fucking know. It's a fucking absolute banger. 
One for PD Crack. One for PD Crack. That's what it's called. PD Crack on there. Beanie Siegel Freeway, I think. Maybe some other state property members like Oskino and Sparks. Haven't listened to that track in a while. It's a banger. Cameron did a verse on there. And, like, Jay-Z did not like that. Like, he erased the motherfucking verse. You know? And that really had niggas pissed. And I guess Cam was supposed to get um, H to the Izzo, you know, of the Blueprint, the 2001 album. And he didn't get that because they took it. So, that had niggas mass. A little shit like that happened during that, that time frame. But anyway, Come Home With Me is fucking amazing. I absolutely love it. I think Come Home With Me is so fucking good. Um, a lot of bangers on there. Joel Santana shines on there a lot. Jim Jones, he got some... He's on there maybe once or twice. Freaky Zeke was like the hype man at the time. Wild nigga on the skits and making niggas laugh. So after that, like, they blew the fuck up. It was a dip set movement from that point. I think it started... I know the mixtape came out, but it really started when Come Haunt Me was released. Because after that, you get Diplomats Volume 2. Cameron just did Paid in Full. Um, Joel just spitting his ass off. Joel Santana is, is killing shit. So, Diplomats Volume 2 was released. You know. That has some bangers on that. Cameron, you know, the hate, hate me now freestyle when he did some Nas. Because Nas went to the radio station and said, the rap game is, is whack. You know, he got at Nelly and Nori. You know, Nori and him are friends. So nobody stepped his rap game up. He said Cameron is whack. You know, he's just going off. So Cam dissed him one to hate me now. Instrumental, really raw shit. You know, I said, I'll, 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 what do you say? I'll, I'll Kelly, your daughter, have a way with her face. Something disrespectful like that. And, uh, you know, it was crazy. Then, you know, a lot of freestyles, you know, going on at the time. Um, Different Match Volume 3 comes out, mixtape, <clears throat> you know, they just keep releasing mixtapes, Joel Santana at this, like, what, summer 03, he gets his full-length album, but before that, before that, the amazing, one of my favorite double discs of all time, The Diplomats, Diplomatic Community is released. And at this point, the Diplomats was basically Cameron, of course, Joel Santana, Jim Jones, Ricky Zeke, you know. Hellrell was locked up. He's on, like, freestyles and shit. Ancasa was in Purple City. And Purple City consisted of the legendary Agalaw, you know, Adolf Agalaw was the illest member, in my opinion. Shice Bub and Ancasa. But Ancasa is on the intro of diplomatic community, and that nigga just catches all types of fucking bodies on that shit. He murdered that. But yeah, diplomatic community is just so fucking good. Everybody knows Dipset Anthem. Jewel Santana and Cameron killing shit. Everybody knows I really mean it. Just Blaze production. I really mean it. It's amazing. Cameron killed that. Um, what else is on that motherfucker? It's hard to think. Mad shit. More than music. I think Joel's solo tracks. A bunch of shit. I, I I have like damn near everything they released. It's too lazy to physically get up and get these CDs. You know what I mean? All this is off memory. But yeah, that double disc of fucking straight pure fire. And then Jewel Santana releases his solo album in, like I said, summer of 03-ish. 03, definitely. Um, from me to you, and it's it's a solid album. A lot of people didn't like it at the time. Don't know fucking why. You know, he got personal on the album. You know, real true stories that happened to him. Um, down, I love down. Down is a dope ass track. Down is so dope in my opinion. Love that track. Um, Santana's Town was a fucking hit. This is when I seen some crazy shit around this time frame. Santana's town was everywhere, you know. Joel's dip, dip, Santana, set, set. You know what song I'm talking about. <laughs> that was everywhere. Um, What I mean by weird shit is 
no word of a lie. DJ Vlad did an interview with Lord Jamal, and he said this, and I swear to God, I popped when he said it because he's not fucking lying, yo. This shit happened in Massachusetts, too. Me and my uncle, man, we be driving around, and we be seeing Joel Santana lookalikes around the city. Like, that's how much Dipset had the game on lock. From 2002 to, I want to say, 07, niggas wasn't fucking with Dipset. In my personal opinion, um, besides, you know, I listen to a lot of underground shit like Jedi Mind Tricks and Necro and Nonfiction, Cage and Mortal Technique at that time too, but mainstream-wise, I love G-Unit, I love D-Block, but no way in fucking hell was... They see in Dipset, in my personal opinion, man. So, you know, they're right there with them, don't get it twisted. But I prefer Dipset. So, yeah, man, seeing Joel Santana lookalikes with the bandana wearing the same clothing that nigga would rock. You know, this is that, this is the throwback jersey era. This is the 4XLT era, white and white Air Force era with the ankle socks. Bitches rocking jersey dresses. Google it if you know what the fuck that is. This is that era. Niggas Harlem shaking. Probably getting that was probably getting played out by O three, but that's that era, man. You know. And uh, yeah, that Jules Santana album was fucking dope. You know. The mixtapes are just going crazy. You know, the mixtapes are are getting very fucking popular. You know what I mean? Um. Cameron is talking about Purple Haze, his, you know, his next album. So, 03 basically was one of their best years. For the simple fact of Diplomatic Immunity being released and that shit is flames and the mixtapes and stuff like that. So, 03 is big for them. We get into 04. And it's Jim Jones's turn. You're getting a Jim Jones. Um, Jim Jones is that dude, in my personal opinion, back then, especially. He just talked that shit. You know what I mean? The nigga was one of the illest shit talkers in the fucking game. You know, his his nicknames, you know, one eye Willie, um, New York City's Rider Man. He was just so dope. The nigga was so ill, son. Like, he was on Smack DVD one time, and he's just talking shit. He's like, man, I I walk in the store with nothing but boxes on and come out wearing something fly, something new. You know, just talking that shit. <laughs> Jim Jones just cracked me up. You know, told Nas, you know, smack off his Kofi. Kofi smacker, off his Kofi. You did. You know, it was just so fucking cool. The aura of him, too. You know, Jim Jones was that fucking dude. Capo status. The shit he would talk was so ill. Like, he was so dope. Jim Jones was so ill, son. Seriously. A lot of niggas hate on Jimmy. Call him a bitch. We'll get into that. I disagree with some shit he did, but Jim Jones was that fucking dude. So, he puts out mixtape, you know, uh, writing music, I believe. That's just dope. That's to get niggas prepped for his debut in August of 2004, which is On My Way to Church. And what's famous about leading up to that release, he released also uh, Ambitions of a Gangsta mixtape. But, you know, amongst all that, was the fucking Mace phone call on Hot 97 with Miss Jones. This shit was crazy. It was 2004. Cameron um, was was pissed at Mace since like 98 because Mace had charged him for the horse and carriage video. And shit didn't happen. That's why Mace is not in the video. They had a falling out. So... Mace became pastor like in 99. So in 04, he's coming back to be this fucking gospel type nigga. And <laughs> Mace is so contradictory. That's what we'll, we'll get into the whole 
recent beef later. But he just came back 2004 with this horrendous fucking song, Welcome Back. The album is trash. Um, Mace was fucking garbage then. And Cameron called up explaining why they have beef. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that, y'all. And uh, Mace did not want no problems. He didn't want no smoke with Cameron or the diplomats. Then Jim Jones calls in, and Jimmy's like, yo, fucking that shit. Is that you, Bethel? Is that you, Bethel? <laughs> and, uh, I'll put dentures in your mouth, boy. Don't play with me, you know? Oh, if it's a koofy. Put you in my koofy category. Like, he was just talking that shit. And Mace is just sitting there, shake. You, you can tell he's shook as Moroccan. Like, this nigga's shook. You feel me? This nigga's on some shit like, pray for Jimmy. I'm like, what the fuck's this nigga Mace talking about, you know? Fuck Mace. Seriously, that's how I feel about the nigga. Like, I love Harlem World. I'm not gonna lie. I like a lot of features he's on, but that, I can't take that nigga seriously. We'll get into that. But anyway, that is... is Look on YouTube. It's everywhere. That was an amazing fucking moment. And then, on my way to Church's release, which was a banger, led by the single Certified Gangsters, featuring the game Little Easy is in the video. But it's like game, camera on a little flip. It's like two different versions. The album version, the game isn't on it, which pissed me off. Got I got it on the mixtape though. I'm not expressing it, but still, um, it was him. Um, Jimmy and Cam was on the main shit, but the other track was little flip in the game. The video version was only camera on in game. It was fucking weird. No little flip to be found. But that was a banger. Sampled Easy E's Boys in the Hood. Oh, that album too. The production was so fucking good. Oh, I love On My Way to Church. I fucking do love that album. I don't care what nobody says. Crunk Music. Big single. But Crunk Music was taken off. Diplomatic Community Volume 2, which came after that. So, all 4, Jimmy comes out On My Way to Church. Then Diplomatic Community. Two comes out. The song Santana is on there. Jewel Santana. That shit's fucking huge. Dipset is owning shit at this time. Purple Haze drops. Like December of I think around that time. Or fall maybe. I'm trying to think. Um, That album is fucking dope as hell. One of my favorite Cameron albums. Down and Out featuring Kanye West. That, that beat is so fucking good. Um. Yeah, man. It's basically a dope ass album, man. I, I love Killer Seeds. Killer Cam, Harlem Streets. Amazing album. After that shit goes down, um, they're just still running the game with the mixtapes and all that shit. They're going crazy with that. You know? 2005 hits. Duels drops his second full length album. Once the games are missing. Um, and that shit was dope as hell, you know, Shot is featuring Cameron, Mad shit was on there, just a really, really good album, and he did really successful with that album too, because everybody was talking about it, you know, that was fucking huge, Dipset ran rough shot for fucking from that year, 05 was a big year for them, Hell Rel is starting to come in his own, he's, he, you know, He's freestyling. Hell Rel right now became my favorite member of Dipset. You know, he really did because after the before that was like a mix between Joel's or Jim Jones, because Jim Jones aura was everything to me. But uh Hell Rel came with the Streets Wanna Know mixtape, just spitting straight fire. Hell Rel is very cocky, you know. And your bitch mad, I won't let her braid my hair. I'm about to cut this shit anyway. Fuck that bitch anyway. The nigga was so cocky, you know? <laughs> and Truth Wanna Know is a fucking... It is in my top probably 15 mixtapes of all time. Um, It's on industry beats a lot of times, but it's album quality material. It's fucking great. So, Hell Rel, you know, J.R. Ryder, the Dominican Prince, as he's known as, you know, J.R. Ryder was fucking dope as hell. Um... You know, they were running rough shot, man. They really were. 
in my opinion, what, you know, uh, like a fucking branch off diplomats was Burb Gang, you know, Jim Jones's clique, which consisted of Max B, um, Mel Matrix, this dude named Noe, sound just like Jay Z, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. And Jim Jones, like, stack bundles of, you know, stack bundles of DJ Clue fame. Stack bundles, rest in peace, man. That nigga was nasty. Um, I, at that time, I listened to Bird Game more than I listened to regular Dipset. Seriously. Because Cam was, like, not really active. How real it was, definitely. But it was, I was mostly bumping that shit. Well, Cam was active. He had Killer Season. But I think around that time, Killer Season was already done with. Because the MOB, the Members of Bird Game mixtape that came out in 06 was fucking everything to me. That shit is banging. Life's like a movie. Credibility. I think, is it credibility? It must be. Yeah, credibility has to be on that. All that shit. I, that, hands down, spoiler alert, that's probably my favorite mixtape of all time. The Members of Bird Gang. Bird Gang was this shit. It's too bad what happened. With the fallout of Max B and Jim Jones. It's really too fucking bad. Because they made incredible music together. The music that Jim Jones, Max B, Stack Bundles, and Mel Matrix made together was fucking amazing. Amazing. Fucking incredible, you know. But, you know, Stack Bundles passed away in 2007. He got shot in his hood in Far Rockaway, Queens. Max V was locked up. Max V came home. They did the Members of Bird Gang 2 mixtape, which is just almost just as fucking good. Love that tape. A lot of turmoil happened, you know, with the dip set as well, because they were beefing with this cat by the name of True Life, this Puerto Rican dude. True Life is okay. I just think he ain't fucking with dip set musically. Now that beef is over, but the beef was basically, you were just sticking up for Jay-Z. He claims he had beef with Jim Jones or something. I was thinking it was just Jay-Z, because Jay-Z had beef with Dipset at the time. You know, in the whole 2006 era, that beef was getting heavy. He dissed them on Kingdom Come, the song um, Dig a Hole. Cameron dissed them on, uh, you know, You Gotta Love It. Max B on the chorus of the Killer Season um, album. Let's talk about the Killer Season movie. Man, oh man, that Killer Season movie. Uh, uh, I, yo, I swear to God, Dipset didn't drop nothing whack then, musically, but that movie was fucking atrocious. It was, it's funny. It's funny. I definitely would say it's funny. There's some funny ass scenes in there. But uh, Killer Season was not well executed, in my opinion. It's very... looks like me. I could make the motherfucking movie with, with a cell phone. It, that's how bad that movie was. But the, the album, Killer Season, Cameron's album, was fucking fire. Um, So, yeah, the, the popularity started dying down in, like, 07. Cameron had to beef at 50 Cent. Because 50 Cent said the Dipset label, Koch... Well, it ain't the Dipset label, but the label that they were on, Koch... Was a graveyard and they ain't getting no money. Cameron called up and said, "In graveyard, nigga, we getting paid." And he made the song Curtis, which is an amazing diss track. Trippy had a dope ass diss to him. It was a, it was good for hip hop. But then Jim Jones and Joels are on stage at Fifty Cent. That rub niggas the wrong way, big time, big time. And all hell broke loose. You know what I mean? They stopped fucking with each other. The music declined definitely because. When Max B left, the music really declined. Jimmy had that Pray for Rain album, which was garbage. Jim Jones, in my opinion, best albums are Harlem Diary of a Summer, um, Hushless Palm, you know, which is an amazing product of my alignment, and of course, On My Way to Church. 2005 was also a big year for Jim Jones. Harlem Diary of a Summer is a fucking masterpiece. It's a classic, underrated as fuck. Harlem Diary of a Summer is so good. I don't get the, the, the like, the, un- oh, I, how niggas ignore that record. 
amazing album. Summer with Miami featuring Trey songs. Dope ass fucking song. G's Up. The Pete Rock produced G's Up track. Is is so ill, yo. Like I love that shit. Such a good song. The whole fucking album's dope as hell. Um, Hustler's Palm was when Jimmy was huge, you know. Everybody knows We Fly High. That's 2006. Everybody knows We Fly High. It's that Bird Gang era that I was talking about. Fucking love it. Max B is that fucking dude. Max B was money. That nigga on a chorus is money. Money, money, money. Max, it pisses me off that his album, Reaping the Benefits, that was to come out in 2006 or 07, never came out because of Jim Jones bullshit, man. So when Jimmy lost me because he had a song called Bury Me in My Gucci's, which was supposed to be the main lead single, and that shit is fucking fire. Featuring Jim Jones and Stack Bundles. Look it up. And that never came out. Jimmy never put the nigga out, which was fucking stupid. You know? But yeah, man. Jim Jones' best years is 05, 06, in my personal opinion, man. A little early. Early, early 07, too. Early 07, too. Early 08, as well, probably. Because that Harlem American Gangster mixtape is fucking pure fire. I love that mixtape. Before he took Max B off, you know, Max B is that dude, man. Max B. Let's talk about Max B. Even though it's not like, it's Dipset related, but he's mostly in Bird Gang. Um, what he ties into. Max B was fucking incredible. The nigga had his own slang, wavy. Everyone in their mama says wavy. Why? Because of Max B. Call himself Big Avell, the balls Dom, Big Avelli. He sounds so unique. So unique. His singing, his rapping. The man was so unique. That something is missing in hip hop. Being unique. And he had it, man. Max B made Jim Jones sound so ill. He wrote a lot of Jim Jones shit, you know. Max B made incredible music. In my opinion, never released nothing whack. I have all his mixtapes, you know, all those public domain, one, two, and three, four, five, um, all that shit, Wavy Crockett, all that. When he broke away from Jim, he made even more classic shit, you know what I mean? Million Dollar Baby, but before that, when he was at Bird Gang, that's when that came out. All, all his shit is fucking fire. Big, big Max B fan. I love Max B. I think Max B is so ill. I hope he gets released soon, like they're saying he he, he will be. Um, but yeah, I had to touch on Max B because he's all part of the Dipset movement. But that movement was crazy. Dipset movement was so big that you knew the goon niggas on the side. You knew these niggas because they would get shot out in songs. Like Ken Ron be like Tito, you know, Jim Jones would shout out Tito and Black of Dawn. And you knew these niggas because they were on Smack DVD and they would say their names. Black of Dawn was a dark skinned nigga with the cornrows that looked fucking evil. Had a mean mug face on him, and, and Tito was a Jamaican nigga, the bald Jamaican nigga. Like, you knew the goon niggas. Like, what? You don't know, as much as I love Wu-Tang Clan, my favorite hip-hop group of all time, but you didn't really know the goon niggas in Wu. Like, you knew goon niggas that was with, with, chilling with Dipset, man. Like, that, that was crazy. That's how much these niggas had an impact. You know what I mean? You knew the goons. Shit was crazy, man. And that 2002-06, early 07 era was impeccable. Niggas ran shit, you know? So that's the whole Dipset shit, man. Let's get on Cameron and Mace. When I heard the Mace track, I was like, it's alright. He got some punchlines there, it's some it's okay stuff. But the nigga waited fucking years to respond to them. Because Cameron made a song called um, Take Him to Church with featuring Uncasa. Uncasa got one little line. But the line is sick, and Joel Santana on the chorus and stuff. Joel spits little bars there, and it was a dope ass track. But he didn't diss him until now because of the intro on the program, whatever the fuck it was. Like, come on, Mace. I can't take a nigga seriously that doesn't stick up for himself whatsoever. Mace did not stick up for himself at all. He was pussy. You know, he was like, pray for Jimmy, you know, and being a bitch. He was a coward, so that. For him to diss Cam now is so fucking weird. Like, first he's a, you know, he's a rapper. Then he's a pastor. Then he's a fucking, not a pastor no more. Then he goes, he leaves and joins G-Unit. Then back to, 
Like, the nigga is a fraud and a phony. Like, I like Harlem World and all that, but fuck Mace. Um, Cameron made a response called Dinner Time. I thought the record was dope. Only problem about that record is it wasn't mixed and mastered because Cameron's on tour. He couldn't mix and master it. But, um, who I think won this, I think Cameron still wins this. Why do I think he wins this? Because Mace's this is just alright. Cameron's this is funny. And the Dipset impact for me is much bigger than anything Mace has ever done. So bar for bar, you could say Mace won. That's your opinion. I don't think so. I think Cameron is much better than Mace. I know niggas might crucify me for that because everybody and their mother are sucking Mace's dick right now. I think it's fucking funny. Like, niggas, niggas really argued with me over this shit, son. Niggas were really getting mad in their feelings. Because I think Mace is just a clown-ass nigga, and it was just I. You know what I mean? But those are my thoughts on the whole Mace and Cameron matter. Shout out to the Diplomats. They got a new track as well, featuring Cameron and Jim Jones called Once Upon a Time. That shit is fucking fire. Heat makers who did a lot of their beats in the early 2000s did this beat. It is so fucking good. Love it. Hope they release a new album with that kind of flavor to it. I don't want no... I want, well, the program's out, and that's, like, fire. So at least something that sounds like that, you know? Because Jim Jones being in that new era swag faggot shit that I can't stand, but at least something like the prime years of Dipset, like you did in the Once Upon a Time record, and I'm good. This has been another episode of the Speak Your Cloud podcast. I truly hope you enjoy. I really do. I will see y'all on the flip side. I hope you enjoyed this. All hail Dipset. Niggas are amazing from 2002 to 06, early 07-ish. Um, see y'all on the flip side. Have a good one, y'all. See y'all soon. Peace.